Hey guys, Tech Venture with a video for you guys. In today's video, we're going to share our top 10 tips to make your iPhone faster on iOS 16. Whether you have a really old phone or a newer phone, these tips are must to try. Whenever you're fe feeling that your phone is sluggish or slow, you can use these tips to gonna increase the speed significantly. So let's dive right into it. The first thing is, a lot of times we keep our phone on forever, but sometimes it's good to give it a nice forced restart so the phone can get a nice reboot of the code and reload everything. So if there's any issues in the code itself or the software, you might not know, it will clear those things up. And to do a forced restart, all we're gonna do is volume up, a volume down, and then hold the side button just like that. Now we're gonna keep on holding that side button. We're not gonna slide to power off. Just keep on holding that side button till the phone goes completely black. And then you'll see the Apple logo reappear again one more time. And then we're gonna let go of that button again. That was volume up and down one after another. And then you hold that big side button until the screen goes black with the Apple logo reappearing. And you might be wondering what this does. This basically does again, reloads the code again. It doesn't delete anything. It's just a nice, clean, fresh restart of your phone. It's quite uh, simply one of the easiest things to do whenever it comes to fixing any sort of software issue that you might have. Now, moving on to the next thing you wanna do is if you have background apps running, so if you go up and from slide it up from your phone, you'll see there's tons of apps that are running in the background of your phone and there might be not using it. What's happening is over time when you run these background apps, it's consuming up a lot of your battery and power because they have to be in the background. So what I simply like to do is simply go ahead and swipe up and close them. Whatever apps that you don't use, for example, all these apps, you'll see ton, just close them all out and can it give your phone a nice restart so the next time you open up an app, you can reload the app again. Now, after you have done that, it's time to free up some space in your phone as well. So to do that, usually I like to start with things like photos, for example, right? You might have tons of photos. Go through your photos. If you can delete some, that's great. Now, if you deleted photos, they automatically go into this album called Recently Deleted, which you'll see here at the bottom. You're going to go check that and then go ahead and view that album either by... Uh, looking at it and see if there's any photos available. So to show you in real time, let's say we go ahead and delete a photo right here. Now what happens is that photo stays in that recently deleted for about 30 days or so. And because it's there for about 30 days, these are so, if the videos and such, you want to kind of remove them completely permanently. In order to do that, you go ahead, select here. You can now delete all just with using button and then let them clear out your album because these are deleted. You just don't want them laying around and consuming up space. And if there's a bigger size file, again, potentially slowing down your phone. Now, the next thing you want to do after doing that is also go into your settings and then go to general and then look for iPhone storage here. Now, this is a great utility built in your iPhone, which allows you to see which of the apps are taking up a lot of storage. Let's say you have apps that you don't use. For example, this one for us, Adobe, it's taking about one gig and we're not really using it. We can click on that we can go ahead and delete that app itself. And it's good to kind of go ahead and do that with apps. Again, you'll see also recommendation where it tells you uh, apps that aren't used. You want to enable that and also take a look at to see which apps are being utilized on your list and go ahead and delete them. Sometimes when you have so many different apps, they're doing so many different things, kind of interfering with the power that the phone has. So it's best to kind of go through the list of your apps and kind of identify those apps. Sometimes we go a little over happy with downloading all the apps possible and we forget to delete them over time. And that can, again, potentially impact your phone's performance as well. So go through and that list as well. While you're doing that, you also see things like messages and such. Make sure you, you know, look at how much consumption of match messages have. You're gonna click on that. You'll just kind of be able to see that data as well. Now, after you have done that, the next thing you want to do now, this was a slightly different one, but if you go into your setting of your iPhone and you look and take a look at the battery of your phone, right? Sometimes we have this low power mode on, which we activate when our phone's usually below 20% to save power. But when you do that, what happens is it reduces the functionality of your phone's performance by a certain degree to save battery, which is great when you're really looking to save power. But when it comes to trying to get your phone to be faster, you want to have this turned off just like that. When it's turned on, generally you'll see here the battery has like this 
a tint of color, but go ahead and turn it off if you have the charge. Now, of course, if your phone is below 20%, which I don't recommend, you wouldn't want to probably use that. But keep that off for the maximum performance you can get. Now, the next thing you want to look at in your settings again is go to general. And now this is a big one, which is app background app refresh. Now, by default, a lot of the apps will be turned on to use the background refresh. So if you see those apps like turned on, either it will be turned on for Wi-Fi or cellular. Let's say we have it turned on for cellular. You'll see a bunch of these apps that are turned on. I would go recommend if you want to turn it off completely, but if you want to keep the background app refresh, which allows the apps to like get up-to-date information on the fly is usually what happens is when you open the app, it still gets the, all the information data it needs at the time, but this will run in the background. So I generally recommend just turning that off. You'll save battery and again, just having those back app refresh not happening. Again, give your phone much faster speed than just having that turned on. Now, the next thing you wanna check out in your settings again, this time it's gonna be around uh, privacy and security here. Now you'll see here, if you have location services on, tons of apps can be using your location without you realizing. For example, let's say you have an Apple Watch, right? You might not want it to have your location all the time, or if you're not using Apple Watch and this was turned on before, I would say just turn it off just like that. You can take a look at list of apps and see if apps really need your location. If they don't, for example, wallet, it might not really need our location. We can just turn it off. This will save a ton of battery and performance as well because when it uses location services, it activates the GPS sensors, which requires power. And while it requires power, it also reduces your speed for your phones to do other things as well. Now, the other thing you want to look at is system services. Go ahead and click on system services and take a look at significant location. Now, you see here significant idea or it gives you a phone a lot of locations as you can see here it's with significant locations on you'll see your phone here looking at all these locations uh, that it's clear keeping up to date always trying to record those locations again using your gps so i recommend is going ahead and turning that off if you can because this data doesn't really do you much and these records you can't even see here so do that and then also clear the history if you want to just completely carrying it out. Now moving on to the next thing you want to take a look at in your settings is going to be your Safari settings. So in settings here, go ahead and take a look at Safari here and start with just clearing out your history and data for your website because tons of data over time can accumulate and it could kind of throw down your Safari experience. I recommend doing this clearing every couple of weeks or so and then closing out tabs as well if you don't need to. The next thing you want to look at is advanced setting as well and then website data here. This one, if you cleared it, it will be gone. But if you have tons of data here, I recommend clicking on it and deleting those data as well. You'll see much improvement in your Safari browsing experience. Now moving on to the next one in the settings here, we're going to look for this time the App Store itself. So if you could take a look at App Store, you'll see here a bunch of apps here but we wanna take a look for App Store here. So go ahead and click on App Store and go all the way down here where it says personalized recommendation. And now the thing you wanna do is you wanna clear again the app data usage because what it happens is over time it creates tons of this uh, app data on your device. Again, when I'm looking for to customize your App Store experience, I recommend doing a clear here and that will also improve the performance of your phone. Now, the next thing you also want to check out in your settings here, if you go into settings here, right, you want to go ahead and take a look at accessibility here. In accessibility, you see a bunch of options here. Now, the option that we're going to be looking at here, as you'll see here, tons of options here. You want to pretty much reduce motion here. So you want to make sure that this is turned on just like that. And the reduced motion, what it allows you to do is reduce all those animation that are happening, which... Again, it's great to have if your phone isn't slow, but if your phone is slow and you're having those issues, I recommend trying this on and seeing if you have improvement on your battery. Now, this is going to be slightly different for everyone, but I tend to find that reducing motion helps with your phone, phone speed as well. Now, the next thing to do is time to make sure your apps are 
all up to date. And what I mean by your phone apps are up to date is that when you're running older version of apps, generally it will slow down your phone significantly because it's running older code on your phone. So to make sure your apps are up to date, go in your uh, app store and then click on the profile here. And then once you click on your profile here, you'll see here update all or apps that needs to be updated. And you want to go ahead and click update all because you want to make sure your phone is running up to date with the latest version of the software with your iPhone. So it matches that. We'll click on that. As you can see here, it'll take some time. Make sure in a good Wi-Fi or cellular data and you'll see a bunch of apps being updated again. Those reloaded newest code should help improve your performance. Along with that, in your settings here, you want to go to a general year and then do a software update and it's time to update your phone software if your phone is available for an update and the reason why you want to do that is we sometimes tend to ignore the updates here and the reason why you want to avoid that because sometimes there's a lot of important bug fixes enhancements security updates that could potentially fix your phone's issue and also fix performance issue if you're having that so make sure again you're on a good Wi-Fi or cellular data, your phone is at least 50% or more, and you'll hit that download and install to update it. Now, this could take somewhere between half an hour to 45 minutes. This is about two gigs of update, but sometimes the update could be a little bit longer. So keep in mind, if you do that, you have to be out a little bit patient. So all of these, hopefully, tips help you guys in terms of improving your phone speed and making your phone iPhone faster. We want to hear from you guys. If you have other tips as well, leave it in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. See you guys next time.